Uh, hello, um, welcome to our talk. Uh, we're representing Teachers Pay Teachers. We're going to talk about how we implemented GitOps um, and you know what we learned along the way. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with some introductions and some context, um, and then we're just going to go straight through the decisions that we had to make, um, kind of learning GitOps as we went. Um, it'll take about 15 minutes, um, then we're going to wrap it up, and finally we'll, we'll get some Q&A time. Uh, introductions. Um, so hey, my name is Raptor, uh, really Raptor. Um, been doing DevOpsy sort of stuff for like six years, uh, mostly with education um, tech things. And I'm just super excited to be here. I don't know. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself, Alicia? Sure. Hey, I'm Alicia. Um, I'm really excited to be here. And I'm also very happy that KubeCon is here in Detroit, because I'm from Southfield, Michigan. So I didn't have to travel, which is pretty awesome. Also doing dev tools kind of stuff for about six years. And yeah, excited to be here. Um, some stuff about us. Uh, so TPT, Teachers Pay Teachers, that's the acronym. Um, we've got about 5 million resources available on just about every aspect of pre-K through 12 ed. Um, a lot of resources. Um, teachers are just generally know us, and they usually have feelings about it. Generally positive, um, but uh, if you have any teacher friends, definitely ask them. Um, we've got about 250 employees, um, and we're, we're mostly remote. Um, and now, like, we're going to start getting better and better stuff. Uh, so engineering context. Um, so we're about 100 devs deep. Um, and we've got 101 services. Um, we got really lucky uh, when we started uh, TPT, both of us, like about a year ago, in, in that almost all of our services have a lot in common um, using a similar Node.js template. Um, we pretty quickly ruled out tackling the monolith. Um, and we also have some front-end services that we were able to, to work on, too. Um, our infrastructure stack is, um, is, is in Kubernetes. We have three kube clusters on EKS. Um, and we also have a bunch of serverless apps in there. Um, we didn't really think that we'd be able to do the same GitOps stuff with them, but it all kind of worked out well. Um, and our team topology is we're on DevTools, um, but a lot of our like, actual like, deeper cloud knowledge is, is on a different team. Um, so we work closely with them on all of this. Um, so what led us to GitOps? Um, so you're here, so you probably know a thing or two about GitOps. Um, so what, but what, us, what brought us there is um, we wanted to make software delivery improvements. Um, so starting in a new company, you're not sure how you can help, what you can do. Um, and we noticed like three uh, main things come up. Um, the first one being reliability. Um, so there were a couple of rollback bug issues on our, our legacy system, which we called um, Houston. Um, so this legacy system would call into Jenkins, and Jenkins would do the actual work, um, and it just it didn't always work, and developers were not happy about it. Um, this was for rollbacks and deployments generally. Um, another thing that we really care about is visibility. Um, so because it was two systems, it was hard to know where the problem was if you were a developer day to day. Um, and you didn't get a lot of user feedback um, from the first system that said whether things were working or whether they weren't working. And then the third thing that we really wanted to, um, and that has come up a couple times today already, is, um, is like different deployment styles or, or canary deployments. So um, we really latched onto a couple different services for, for doing that. Um, so again, how can we improve software delivery? Um, it took us like a little while. We had like some complicated product like charts, um, but we decided on using Argo CD. Um, we had some experience with Flux One and Flux Two, uh, and it was just a little rocky. Um, I, it, it does a lot of cool stuff, and it taught us a lot of lessons and things we were doing. Um, and we wanted to try something new, um, particularly with the upgrading from Flux One to Flux Two. It was just it, it wasn't as smooth for us. Um, we liked the Argo CD UI. Um, it was just kind of bundled into it, basically. Like, that was nice. And we weren't experts on Kubernetes. Uh, I, I still don't feel like an expert on Kubernetes. Um, and so just having that UI is helpful. Um, and we just liked GitOps. Uh, and we liked it enough that now we're here, I guess. Um, cool. You want to talk about some decisions, Alicia? Sure. Thanks, Raptor. So after we landed on um, using Argo CD, we had a bunch of decisions to make. Um, First of all, where do we make those GitOps commits to? I think it was Jim from Harness, I thought I saw him there, yeah, who was talking about that before. And then what are in those GitOps commits? So first to talk about like where we make those GitOps commits. 
So like Raptor talked about, we have about 100 services or so, um, each one in their own application repo. And in those application repos, they have, we're using Helm, so they have a Helm chart plus the values files for both staging and production in, in the application repos themselves. Once we spun up Argo CD, we, ha we created a separate um, application manifest repo to store the Argo CD application manifests in. And we were kind of thinking, hey, it would be a good time, even before adopting Argo CD, we were thinking maybe we should get those Helm charts and values files out of the application repos and centralize them because it's a pain um, to manage all the individual um, Helm charts and values files in each of the application repos. And we were kind of like, you know, how should we do this? But we also, we just wanted to adopt Argo CD at this point, and we're like, let's make it small, incremental, let's keep the existing uh, structure that we have. So that's where we landed on keeping it in the app and uh, service code repo. Once we decided to put it there, we had to figure out what goes in those uh, GitOps commits. So for deployments, it's basically just bumping a Docker image for most of our deployments, and we figured, okay, that should be simple enough. Like, our GitOps commits could just do that. They'll update the Docker image to the latest tag. And then, like I mentioned, we have staging, prod. The way pre-Argo CD before, the way our deployments worked is developers would manually, or sometimes in some cases, was automated per, uh, deployment to staging, and then either an automated test or a manual test, check it out, then promote it to production. So we wanted to again, continue the same flow, like make as little changes as possible. And to that end, we decide we'll have two GitOps commits. It, we decide we'll go to uh, automated staging deployments always, so no more manual uh, staging. So as soon as you merge your feature branch to the main branch, we'll do a GitOps commit, bump staging, and then have a, a pause for approval, and then promote it to production. After we implemented that way, we realized we actually had a couple more things that we needed to put into those GitOps commits. So we have these uh, internal tools um, that make sure that anytime you make any Helm chart changes or values files changes, you bump the Helm chart version too. Again, we could have just like changed those internal tools to avoid it, but we're like, you know what, it's not such a bad idea to bump the Helm chart version every time we do this anyway, so we added that to the GitOps commit. It's no, not a big deal, we're not making those commits. The uh, CI system is making those commits. And like you might have seen, we're using CodeFresh. Um, also, um, in addition to that, our CI system, um, like I mentioned, we do staging, pause, and then we do prod. So since we're making the GitOps commits to our main branch, as soon as we did that staging commit, if we wanted to do a Slack notification with like the author of the feature, like the commit author, we'd have to look back at commit, and we're like, okay, we could definitely do that, but instead, why don't we just add the commit author to the GitOps commit? So it was interesting, that's what we did. And here you can kind of see where we got in our V2. And V2 was great, things were working fine, we had the good Slack notifications, things were working, but um, developers were mostly happy, but we started getting some feedback that actually deployments were getting um, delayed and it's an interesting reason for that. So prior to adopting Argo CD, like I mentioned, um, somebody would merge their feature branch to, to main branch, they do a staging deployment, and then pause, take a look at prod. As soon as uh, that fellow would merge their feature to main branch, if somebody else wanted to do a deployment afterwards, they could already rebase their feature branch with the latest code from the main branch. This is prior to Argo CD. Now, once we adopted Argo CD and we're making those commits directly to the main branch, in order for the developers to, to get ready, to get their feature branches ready and to rebase, they actually had to wait until um, all the GitOps commits were done, then they could rebase. And it wasn't trivial because, unfortunately, we're hoping to improve this, our CI times are a bit slow like probably a lot of people have this, but um, therefore it was slowing down um, deployments. So we, we, um, we realized that, here's the, I just skipped again, what we realized we wanted to split out those GitOps commits to another repo. And like I mentioned before, we, ha we already had an Argo CD application manifest repo. So we were thinking, again, 
let's maybe reconsider, we'll move our values files, our charts out of um, the application repos and move them into this Argo CD app, uh, application manifest repo. But besides for not wanting to make too many changes and boil the ocean, we also were, um, were relying on the presence of the charts and values files in the application repos for another internal tool which spins up an ephemeral environment every commit. And we're like, this is gonna be a lot of work if we wanna do this. So we're like, what else could we do? Is there any other way to do this? And we stumbled across in your application manifest, your Argo CD application manifest, you could actually specify uh, Helm parameter overrides. And we're like, okay, this is interesting. We can now make a GitOps commit, and I'll show you what it looks like, to our application manifest. And it's kind of an interesting thing, and in fact, the documentation, the Argo CD docs call it out and say like, don't use this in prod. And we were like a little bit hesitant because this is kind of a hacky way. So if you, could, if you could follow along here, we have our application repo with the values files and the charts in one repo, your application specs, your Argo CD application specs in another repo, and in that other repo, we specify the overrides of the Docker image to use. So the Docker tag is um, being set in that, um, in that uh, Argo CD application spec. We reached out like on Slack, I guess, to the CNCF, or no, I, I don't know, the ArgoCon Slack thing and asked them, somebody's like, yeah, it seems okay, and it's been working fine, and it's great. Application uh, owners are very happy, things are working fine, and so far we're, we're liking. Um, Raptor, nope, still me, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> One more thing, so now that we have these, um, these changes to the Argo CD applications uh, manifests, how do you apply those? So one of the things that uh, people may be familiar with is the idea of an app of apps. So you could have an Argo CD application that manages other Argo CD applications. So even without all the other stuff that I discussed, we were kind of thinking, hey, maybe we should do this app of app thing, but we're like, oh, I don't know, yes, no. But here was a good use case for it because we wanted to um, sync the application, the Argo CD applications themselves with the Helm chart parameter overrides. Those need to be updated before you do a deployment, because if you don't update those before you do depl deployment, you don't have that override in, and therefore you're getting the old code in. So you gotta make sure that those are up to date. So we're like, once we make that GitOps commit to change the Argo CD application parameter, <laughs> Helm parameter overrides, we need to make sure those are synced. So we were thinking, this is a great use case for app of apps, let's try it out but we quickly, quickly realized that it's actually a single point of failure because if anything happens with any of those apps, the parameter overrides, which we actually experienced, we had like a git commit that happened to be only numbers and um, Argo CD uh, complained that it was like an integer when it should have been a string for the Docker image tag, I might be butchering this, but basically, because of that, the sync failed, and once the sync failed, none of our other applications were getting updated, and if they don't get updated, then all the deployments are using the old tag. So we decided, actually, we'll just do a cube apply, and things are going well. And now, now to you, Rafter. Oh, that was good. Uh, yes, uh, so I get to talk about syncing. I really like syncing. Um, I hope you'll join me in, in thinking about syncing. Uh, so this is the Argo CD page. Um, when you click the sync button, there's like a pop-up that's like, okay, here's what you're gonna do. Um, and I am not always super great at reading uh, everything, and so I, like, I saw this page and I was like, I don't know what to do with this. Um, but I, I quickly realized that I needed to know what, what these did. Um, in particular, um, I'm gonna call out auto-create namespace, which is one of my favorite flags um, and would totally encourage everyone to use. Um, and then the, the bigger, scarier one with, um, is, is prune here. Um, so let's talk about prune, maybe. Um, so initially, um, we decided to trigger Argo CD syncs manually, um, and our reasoning for that was uh, to get more feedback to users and more control, especially as we were gaining more comfort with the system. Um, we had talked about doing Argo CD notifications um, instead to handle that, um, but we, we wanted to keep it consistent um, and it was less work to keep consistent with how we wanted CI and stuff to move over to, to Argo products in the future, too. Um, <clears throat> so um, we, we decided to keep Prune turned off for like the first couple services that we did, um, mostly out of fear. Um, but eventually we, uh, we dove into the prunes, so you can see these, this 
delicious bowl of prunes. And like once you try prunes, you, you can't stop eating them if you're me. Um, so we turned it on. It was something like cron jobs, um, which we needed to delete every time we deployed one of our apps for. Um, and these cron jobs had similar names um, that would conflict. And so when we had prune it, it worked. And we didn't have prune, it didn't work. Um, and we now have prune on all the time, and it's just been fine. So, so yeah, go for prune. Um, we, did, we did decide to continue doing the Argo CD syncs um, manually. Um, we were just pretty happy with the ability to get feedback and interpret feedback from running Argo CD commands. Um, I feel like it also helped us learn Argo CD better, is like specifying the different prune flags every time and, and knowing what you want, the different sync flags. Um, so how do we how did we migrate? Like that's one of the fun things that like we as like a, a end user company can talk about. Um, so we started to do one at a time pairing. Um, we got lucky. Um, our cloud team was like, "Here's a service. It's live in production. If it breaks, it it won't be that big a deal." Um, and we were pretty happy with one at a time pairing for a while. Um, in part because like we were starting to learn GitOps, but our company didn't really understand GitOps, uh, and this was like one way to really build that education. Um, and I think like one at a time, people just, you know, they, they respond more and, and we learn more and everyone's happier. Um, after we got better at that, we formalized a, a process for this, um, which turned into the self-service pipeline to add to pipelines, uh, which is kind of just a fancy way of saying like there was one process that they could click a button, that teams could click a button on and migrate their services over to using GitOps for. Um, so we, we kind of saw how that goes for a while and if they could actually self-service it. Um, some of the reasoning on these decisions is that um, when we migrated our first couple services over, we saw a couple of bugs that we hadn't picked up on or guessed would exist, um, including like the malformed strings one that Alicia mentioned. We found some staging database connections that didn't work, which is like too bad, um, and we're glad we found those. Uh, there were a couple of Kubernetes settings that were just out in the wild that weren't actually doing anything, and then with like with Argo, we figured out they weren't doing anything and were just kind of nonsense settings. For, for them, so, so that was nice. But yeah, just being involved in figuring out all those different use cases. Um, at about 30, uh, we started thinking how to automate through the rest of them, because we re remember we had like 100 services that we were trying to tackle. Um, and we haven't gotten them all the way through, but it's, it's going pretty well. The automation is fine. Um, did people like it? Uh, yeah, the early adopters uh, super loved it. Um, Again, our, our legacy system was okay. We, we needed to improve the things. They saw we improved the things. They were, they were happy. Um, there's a couple services that are less excited about moving over. Change is hard. Uh, changing how you deliver software is always things go wrong sometimes, right? So, you, so it's understandable. Um, we got it down to like uh, less than 30 minutes for a service to deploy to run CI, staging, and production. Um, we didn't get any major issues rolling out new services related to GitOps, which is great. Um, we, we kind of thought there would be more, but it was fine. Um, one thing that we, we even expected to have issues on was, um, so how Argo works is um, it does a Helm template to like make files and like templatize files, and then it does a cube apply on them. And before we were doing Helm upgrade to manage our versions. Um, so switching from Helm upgrade to like the Helm template and apply, like that was like fine. Uh, so like if you are using Helm upgrade right now and are worried about that, it'll, it'll be okay. Um, and there was the roadblock, as mentioned before, um, for GitHub commits in the same repos, plus long CI times, plus rebasing is, is frustrating. But, but yeah, we solved that in the, the way that Alicia brought up. Uh, so it was kind of a lot, maybe. Uh, I felt like it was a lot. Does anyone have any questions for us right now? Otherwise, we can talk about other stuff. Um, I see one over here. Uh, do you want to start? Hello. OK. Um, it's really interesting because we went through this exact thing uh, a year ago. And if you wouldn't mind, I would love to talk to you afterward uh, because I think uh, there is a next step that you can take uh, that would be really, it's, it's quite impressive. It's exactly the same path with the awesome. deep, same repo first and then a couple of repos. Um, but the way forward, I would say, with application sets and how you can divide uh, different things on the values. Um, so yeah, uh, would love a chat afterward. Awesome. That's it. I will not bother everyone with it. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Thanks. Hello. Uh, my question is, um, can you talk a little bit more about where the bottlenecks were, if there were any, regarding the scalability? 
you mentioned it took 30 minutes. Granted, there were uh, multiple environments. And yeah, like what did you notice? Where were the bottlenecks in order to deploy a lot more services? Sure. Um, let me try to repeat the question. So you're asking when we were migrating a bunch of the services, where were the bottlenecks? In did you say something specific more, specifically to? More more on the deployments, not the not deployments. migrations. Just deploying your code to an environment, like. Where did you notice any bottlenecks, or did you even notice them? Do you mean bottlenecks in terms of time? Right, yeah, so like how many deployments could you deploy to production? You mentioned 30 minutes, right? So if you had like 30 services, so what happens if you do 100 services or 500? Sure. And where would you see the bottlenecks? Got it, yeah, thanks for the question. So just to try and repeat it is, we have like 100 services, that's a lot of services. Where do you see the bottlenecks? It takes 30 minutes to deploy, et cetera. So to try and address that, um, to be fair, we did not do 100 services at once. So we never really experienced like a huge rollout. What we did is, like Raptor talked about, at first we did like one at a time. And even now, once we're starting to automate this, we're gonna just put in a, a space in between them. So we're never gonna, hopefully, I mean, if we start a new cluster or something like that, we should run into it. But just to avoid the whole issue, it's like we don't need to do the migration all at once. So we just did it iteratively and just broke, broke the um, deployment, the, the migrations um, apart. But one thing is um, to address maybe something else you're asking about is we haven't had any issues with scale yet with deployments currently. So there are obviously application developers make changes at any time during the day, and maybe five applications will be deployed at the same time, but we, I don't think Raptor, you could correct me if I'm wrong, we haven't seen any scaling issues yet. So that's encouraging, I guess. Um, I'm trying to understand if the developers are your users, basically their end-to-end -end workflow, so they make a PR with their application code, right? And they commit that to the main branch or whatever. And then you have this Argo CD repo. I'm gonna stop you right there for one second. Yeah. They make a PR and then they merge that, the, the yeah. feature branch to right. main branch. Okay, same thing. Right, yes. yeah. And then they, then they do a new PR on the Argo CD repo, right? No. No. Yeah, so, sorry, and <laughs> let me repeat. Yeah. I guess it's you're okay. using the mic. You, I won't you went repeat. through a lot of good slides. Yeah, and, I'm trying and, you know, to be I was a just good trying citizen. to imagine like <laughs> where where are their human gates at? Is what I was trying to basically yeah. get to. Where are the where are the human gates for them? Yeah, sure. Should I take this right? <laughs> or do you want to take it? Oh uh, yeah, go for it. Okay, so um, they obviously have to get PR approval, and they have to pass CI. So GitHub enforces both of those things, and then once they merge to main branch, they next they themselves could approve promotion to production. So everything's automated. They just actually through Slack, we just have an approve button and that sends an approval, to, that, send, that kicks off the next um, GitOps commit to change the prod tag and trigger a sync. One thing we didn't really, uh, Raptor touched on this, but we're not auto-syncing right now. So we're Right, so who's doing the auto-sync, or who's doing the manual sync? The, the CI system. It's triggering um, okay. sync. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's not you. It's running was, like, for some reason, I thought it was you, and I was like, how, how does that happen in 30 minutes? Do you have someone <laughs> sitting there all day long? <laughs> no, so we're not, uh, the CI, we use CodeFresh, and CodeFresh is triggering an Argo sync. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, I guess we, we called it manual, but right. we're, we're not doing it. Yeah, uh, thanks for the clarification. Good question. <laughs> How are we doing on time? Uh, we're doing pretty good. We got uh, eight minutes. Oh, sweet. Question over there. So you mentioned you found early adopters, uh, to, let's say the first guinea peaks for the exercise. Was there a process or you already knew like, oh, we can always go to those five app teams because they're going to try the things before others try things? Please. Yeah, no, go for it. Okay. <laughs> You've been killing it. <laughs> All right, I'll keep rolling. Um, so the question was, how do we ad identify early adopters, basically? Like, who, who volunteered? So like Raptor mentioned, um, we work closely with Cloud Ops. Uh, we're on the DevTools team, but Cloud Ops volunteered a service. One of the fun things that I like that we did is we, like, uh, again, what Raptor mentioned, we have a legacy um, 
uh, custom deployment tool, like he said, it's called Houston. We made that thing on uh, Argo CD, so deploying the deployer, the old deployer on Argo CD. So we, merged, we, we started off with like our own apps, basically. And then we're like, hey, um, call to action. Anybody want to be uh, an early adopter? And, and generally, people were feeling the pain of deployments. And like Raptor called out some of the, like there was low visibility, rollbacks were painful. So we're like, we're trying to solve this. Like we think this will help. Who wants to volunteer to take this journey with us? And luckily, there were a few volunteers, so we started with those, and, and it was it was definitely a manual pairing process with those early adopters. But then, people, you know, word of mouth, hey, this is actually cool. Like, so that's how it worked. Yeah, I'll add that we definitely had to beg a little bit. Um, just so we have like a TL, like a team lead concept, and like some TLs were like, yeah, let's do this, let's adopt, and and some were like, eh, maybe later, let's see what, what other TLs do. Um, so just like slacking people from a list of uh, a pod chart, like who owns services, will you let us please use your service and make things better? Um, if there's no more questions, we have other slides we can talk about. Um, How are we doing time-wise? Should we just switch? Uh, yeah. We've got five plus minutes. Sorry. We've got five plus minutes. All right. Yeah. This is a cool stuff if we have time. Uh. <laughs> Um, cool. I think there was a lightning talk that I missed about this, and I'm kind of bummed about it because um, one of the things that held us up when we like first started is like, what does the Argo CD app repo structure look like? And we found like a couple of blog posts that had like ideas, um, and we weren't really committed to to following any specific one of them. Um, so how we ended up doing is, so we had three clusters, uh, three EKS clusters, um, and we just made a folder called apps and a folder called RBAC. Um, for each of those clusters. Um, I don't know if I, I worded that well, but perhaps you can see in this image there's EKSCI and then the apps, and then these are some of our apps in there. Um, the RBAC stuff didn't really fit in into the Argo CD structure that we like saw initially, and so we just kind of added that later. Uh, but yeah, not worth getting held up on what the, the right repo structure should be. Um, I, I think like ideally, um, we had used Helm files a little bit in the past, and we kind of liked that set up too. Um, but with just three clusters, it seemed like let's just keep moving. Um, but we'd love to talk more about this if other people have better uh, structures on that. Um, another thing that kind of held us up um, initially was installing, um, installing Argo CD and Argo rollouts across clusters. Um, we had seen autopilot, Argo autopilot, um, which I think was not yet fully released when we had, were installing things. Um, but we really like it now, and I think in hindsight we would have used something like that. Um, what we did use was the Argo CD Helm chart and the Argo CD apps Helm charts uh, to manage additional apps. Um, and we, we do manage Argo CD through Argo CD, so that's been cool. Um, chat ops stuff, I, I think you've kind of been owning the chat ops things. Sure, um, yeah, so we've, we've been going closer and closer to being able to just use Slack and just like we talked about the approvals through Slack um, and putting in tons of metadata into there, so it's been pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so let's, let's wrap it up. Uh, so where we're at now is um, a lot of our, our delivery stuff is working really nicely with CD, with Argo CD. Um, and with GitOps, we'd like to start um, incorporating Argo workflows. Um, CI was the bigger uh, beast for us to tackle, so we, we got started with CD and delivery and proving that first. Um, things are, are pretty smooth. Um, we didn't mention it, but the, the diff checking on moving over to Argo CD is really nice, and we're just happy using Argo CD. Um, we still have lots to iterate on and learn, obviously, uh, as I think you've seen from some of the slides of just like our confusion, but like overall, we, we feel good. We love GitOps. Um, Company has been supportive, and I think people have appreciated it and seen value in it. Um, and we're excited for the future. I just wanted to call out Christian over here. Thanks for uh, this is our first time talking, so thanks for the call out to try and talk. And uh, yeah, like you mentioned, we'd really like to uh, continue the discussion. If anybody has ideas, we know we don't know a lot of things, so it's great great to be here. Thank you very much. Woo!